Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today I want to take a look at the best solar filters to photograph the sun, both before, during, and after the eclipse. Also, at the end of the video, I want to talk about a few other pieces of equipment that you might find useful when photographing the eclipse in April. Let's dive in. So solar filters can really be broken down into two main categories. We have visible light or broadband filters, and we have narrowband filters. Narrowband filters are very expensive niche tools that are used to photograph the sun, the prominences, the different parts of the sun, and can really be used to create some amazing images. The problem is, like I said, they're expensive, they're fairly finicky, and unless you're gonna really get into solar photography as a hobby, they're probably not an investment that most people are gonna wanna make. When it comes to visible light or broadband filters, which are what we're gonna focus on in this video, we can really break those up into two main categories as well. We have glass filters and solar film filters. I want to compare glass versus solar film filters in four main categories. We're going to look at the differences in price, the differences in sharpness and image quality, the differences in durability, and the differences in color accuracy. So when it comes to price, solar film filters are the clear winner. Solar film filters are made of a coated membrane, it's coated on both sides, that blocks a lot of light. And you actually can see when you get a solar film filter, some of the photos on websites show that it really is a flexible material that the filter is constructed out of. A good solar film filter can be had for around $25 to $30. You can also just buy solar film sheets. Here's an example on B&H's website. And you can actually cut this sheet down to fit a variety of different cameras, lenses, your phone, whatever you wanna use for a very affordable price. Glass filters on the other hand are made of glass and they are quite expensive. So you are gonna be spending more like $100, $150 for a good quality glass filter. Now here's the other thing, when it comes to sharpness and contrast, there is a little bit of debate here, but most photographers agree that solar film filters will provide sharper and higher contrast views of the sun which is a good thing. So not only is solar film cheaper, it's also higher contrast and sharper than your average run of the mill glass filter. Now do keep in mind there are exceptions to this. High end glass filters are as good, if not maybe even a little sharper than solar film, but on average, if you're looking the average between the two, solar film is gonna give you a slight edge when it comes to image quality. Thirdly, when it comes to color accuracy, this is where a glass filter is gonna take the win. Most solar films will not preserve the orange yellow hue of the sun. The sun is not gonna look as true to life through film as it's going to look through a glass filter. So if you're trying to just take your images right out of camera and retain the nice orange yellow hue, a glass filter is gonna be the winner. Now obviously we could use white balance or post processing to restore the color back into the sun when using a solar film filter, but if you're looking for minimal processing, a glass filter is gonna be a better choice. Finally, when it comes to our fourth thing of durability, the glass filter again takes the cake. All solar filters should be carefully inspected before use. And the reason is, is that if there's any sort of damage, they can let unfiltered light through and damage your eyes or your equipment. And this is an important part in this video where I wanna say, never point your camera at the sun without filtration, especially with longer lenses. You can damage your camera, you can damage your eyes. Look up horror story videos on YouTube of people burning holes in the back of their cameras. There's scary things that can happen when you focus the light of the sun to a single point in the back of your camera. But with all that said, when it comes to durability, the glass filter takes the win. Now, I do wanna say, Durability is really important, particularly on eclipse day. When we're gonna get into shooting totality and the diamond ring, we need to remove our filter as quickly and safely as possible. It's gonna be easier with a glass filter because you're gonna be able to set it into a filter case or down on the ground without as much worry of it getting damaged. Solar film filters can get scratched, chipped, torn, a lot of different things very, very easily. Another thing I wanna mention is to always be sure that your filter completely covers the front of your lens. If you are gonna buy just bulk solar film, be sure that you're building a, a safe enough system for mounting it to the front of your lens without any concern of it falling off midway through the shoot or anything like that. Particularly if you're gonna be viewing with an eyepiece and actually looking through a telescope at the sun, you really, really, really wanna make sure that film, there's no way it can come off. 
I really like the safety and security of a threaded filter that will screw onto the front of my camera with the right filter threads. Nisi makes a nice solar filter. Tiffin makes a nice solar filter. I'll leave links in the description down below, but I'm gonna be using a filter that I can safely and securely screw onto the front of my lens. If you do have a telescope, you may have a harder time finding a large enough glass filter to fit over the front aperture. So you may be forced into using a solar film filter if you're using a large Schmidt Cassegrain or larger telescope telescope in order to view the sun. Finally, I do want to mention two other useful pieces of equipment. First would be a star tracker or sky tracker. It's really frustrating to be viewing the sun and constantly having to reposition your camera and telescope to recenter the sun. If the eclipse day is cloudy as well, and you don't know where the sun is, and it happens that right at eclipse time, the sun peeks out from the clouds, it's a huge bummer to have to take the time to reposition your camera to get the sun in the center of the frame. A sky tracker is going to allow the camera and the telescope to stay pointed at the sun throughout the duration of the eclipse. I'll leave a link down in the description to my favorite sky tracker if you guys wanna check that out. So when it comes to price, sharpness and contrast, color accuracy and durability, there's clearly no clear winner. Solar film may be right for you, a glass filter may be right for you. I'll leave that up to you all to decide. Just make sure that you buy your filter from a reputable source and that it is truly rated for solar use. Again, I get all kinds of questions from students of like, can I screw a two stop ND filter into a six stop ND filter and try to make that work? And the answer is probably yes. Um, but don't mess around with this stuff. It can damage your equipment, it can damage your eyes. It just, you can run into a lot of problems. You can lose a lot of sharpness. I mean, legitimately for $24 to buy a bulk sheet of solar filter film, that's pretty cool. And that would be a really good cheap option for those of you who wanna photograph the eclipse on a budget this would be what I would go with. So again, really there's almost a solar filter for every type of person. Finally, the other piece of equipment I would highly recommend would be an intervalometer or interval timer or cable release for your camera. Some way to trigger your camera without actually pushing the button is gonna make it much easier to in one hand be firing off images on your camera, while on the other hand you're controlling exposure, especially when we get into totality, diamond ring, those big moments that happen very quickly. It's nice to separate the shooting aspect from the settings aspect. One hand does one, one hand does the other. For me, I'm gonna be using a glass filter to photograph the eclipse. I'm gonna use a star tracker to keep my camera on target throughout the day and an intervalometer to fire my camera without having to push the shutter button. If you guys like this video, I would love you to drop a like down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. I'd love to see you in a future video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.